So we're here with Jacques Deaver, who did the storyboard art for At The 1130. Jacques, how are you doing? I am doing quite well. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. All right. So what I wanted to know is uh, who or what are your artistic inspirations and why? Um, you know, I get a lot of uh, inspiration from a lot of different, um, you know, uh, cartoons kind of, of my childhood. Um, and then a lot of a lot of like sort of anime influences as well. One of the big ones that comes to mind is Yo Yoshinari. I've been studying his stuff for God knows, like at this point, a year or two. And I mean, he's just an incredible, incredible artist, really great with silhouettes. But um, I also get a lot of my sort of artistic inspiration from music, um, a lot of sort of electronic music um, and a lot of uh, orchestral stuff as well. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess like that's interesting that you get inspired by music because I feel like similarly mm -hmm. too. Um, yeah, I used to be a musician um, before I kind of went down this journey. So uh, it's it's kind of I, I can't get it out of my head. It's part. Yeah. Of me. Did you like play like guitar or like uh, were you a singer? Or? No, I was actually um, a producer and composer. And so my big thing was that I would make a lot of electronic music uh, and a lot of like pop music. And then I would dabble in the sort of video game music scene as well. So um, kind of a lot of just all over the place exploration. Yeah, that's actually, that's really cool. Cause it's like, you can kind of bring a lot of like animation and art storytelling is like, it's about rhythm. So it's like, yeah. how are these characters moving? Like, and I think like movement and like rhythm, like they're so connected and like music's part of that as well. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's why, I mean, that's why we have music videos. Um, yeah. Why, like it, it's, it's, it's just another way of storytelling and any form of storytelling you, you have has rhythm to it. Uh, it has, it has a beat, it has a rise of tension, relaxing that tension. Um, and, you know, sometimes in ways you don't expect or you don't even like, but uh, it takes you on a journey all the same. Yeah. So I guess the journey I wanted to talk about was uh, working on this project. And uh, I wanted to know, like, you know, what excited you most about the project? What did you learn from the project and what skills kind of got reinforced? Yeah, I think that um, my favorite part about it was really just kind of being on on a team and working with a team because, you know, we consider our art and even, you know, when I was a musician, we, we consider a lot of that to be solitary stuff of you just kind of sitting there and doing your thing. But I mean, there's, there's a lot, like when you're collaborating with someone on a project like this or on any sort of creative project, um, you get a lot of input from them that you're missing when you're just focusing on your single frame, um, song, whatever. Completely. And so the fact that uh, being able to work on this project with a group of people, um, I, I think is a really refreshing way to just work creatively. And, and that way you can kind of bring your best stuff to the table. Um, and I mean, even your worst stuff, and maybe someone will like it and throw it in there, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, it's, I, I, I love the process of it and, um, I mean, that's, that, that was my, my favorite part of the whole thing. Um, and then I think, I think the, the kind of the biggest thing um, I learned was kind of similarly along those lines is, is to kind of just get into that flow state and get mm. into the flow state of like, when you're, uh, you know, sometimes when you have a meeting with someone, if you have a meeting uh, with a group of people or whatever to talk about something, um, you know, you kind of get into the, into the heat of the meeting and that keeps going longer and longer and longer. And then everyone's like, all right, when is this going to end? Mm -hmm. You can avoid that. And you can just kind of get a little warmed up with your people. Maybe like when me and Rez were working on some of the storyboards for a little bit, you're kind of just warming up into it. And then you get into that flow state and it's in that flow state when you, when, when, when you and the other person are kind of in your best sort of creative mindset you should just let ideas go and just let them, let them pass, put them down and like move on to the next one because you're going to be able to have so much stuff from that moment in the meeting, that one flow state 
that you can then spend the rest of your time just, you know, like cutting it down, chiseling mm-hmm. out that piece of marble. Now that you have the actual shape of it. Yeah. I think that flow state statement was uh, no pun intended, but like that flow <laughs> state thing was like really interesting. Cause uh, mm-hmm. I think something that a lot of artists like think is like, Oh, I got to work. Like for me, when I was first starting, I was like, I got to work these hours. Like I got to, mm-hmm. I used to like try to time how long I'm spending on art. But I just realized like, that's a waste of time. Like it's yeah. not necessarily like, oh, I have to work these many hours to do this thing. It's no, let's do this thing, you know, however long it takes. Unless, you know, of totally. course, if you're, if you're working for like a company and stuff, like you have to track those hours because that's how you're getting paid. But um, I think especially for this project, it was like, oh, I'm going to work and uh, I have a 30 minute break. I can just get this background done. And it's like, because I was in a flow state, because I had like music and, and everything, like I was able to work through that and, and finish the background in that thing. Yeah. So um, yeah. I think a lot of it is like, oh, well, like you have to have a flow state, like flow state is important because it gets you to an area where you're putting in actual quality to your work and not just like a whole bunch of time. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's not to discount the other time that you yeah, that's are true. in yeah. a flow state because that mm-hmm. time is spent, um, is spent sort of figuring things out so that when you do enter that flow state, it's just like, bam, the ideas are like right there. So exactly. That, yeah. It's not, it's not to discount the rest. Yeah. Of yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I won't yeah, be yeah. Like, oh, don't do that. Um, but. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm right there with you that like, uh, it's the, the, the time spent on the project doesn't, matter more than the ideas created in it and the mm-hmm. product created in the end you can some of my best ideas in music and in art have come from just that moment where i'm like you know what i'm gonna work on this and i get the idea out and, and, mm-hmm. and it's just out there and that's the best it sounds or that's the best that it looks in that moment and and that can be a very very quick time it's it, it does it doesn't need to be spent meditating over your 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 tablet or your 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 piece of paper or whatever you don't need to spend all that time trying to like you know pound something into it just like the if if you just like in in the in in a very short time you can create something really good and then just be okay with that just be yeah okay be okay with, with it that product yeah. at the end of it so like having it be finished and not perfect i don't know i probably mm-hmm. said this mm-hmm. in, in other things but i want to like reinforce it especially for like you know, young artists who are like, oh, I need to draw like this artist. Like you're, you're going to get there, but yeah, you, you got to get it done. Like, yeah, you got to get it done. Got to get it mm-hmm. done, done, move on to the next thing, take those lessons and apply it to it. Like no one's no, <laughs> no professional artist is holding on to a piece for years, chipping away at it. No, mm-hmm. that's not, that's, that's a myth. That's not real. <laughs> yeah. I remember I had this one comic series. I was like, oh, I, it, like it was such a good or I thought it was a good idea at the time um but like I kept working on it for like years and it because it wasn't perfect I was like I gotta do another draft I gotta do another draft it never got done because I was yeah, like, yeah. I kept, <laughs> and then like the other thing too was like I lost track of uh, newer ideas I was working on the same idea but like there's so many new things you can do right you're holding yourself back by holding on to that other thing <laughs> that you're trying exactly. to like make perfect and the only unfortunately like we can say that as much as we want but the only way to learn that lesson is by getting way too involved into something and getting nitpicky and then losing the whole thing in the process like it's a it's 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 one of those lessons that you have to experience have to learn yeah because <laughs> you really could say lesson. yeah you could definitely tell someone like hey like don't get too nitpicky or whatever but they're gonna and they're, they're going that's, to, that's yeah, the process yeah. yeah they're going to until they get sick of the process and then they figure out like well i'm gonna spend as little time doing this as possible so mm. oh completely and then like the whole like i remember too like hearing like oh your ideas have to be like original and so i tried to make original like you know original ideas and it was so hard because i was like i didn't look at anything i didn't experience anything yeah, I was, it's like, nonsense <laughs> yeah it's like crazy like you can't draw them. <laughs> people, people looking at your stuff, um, they're not going to have the same 
background that you do. Mm, so same influences, you're, yeah. Yeah, you're automatically bringing new things to the table just by, I don't know, like copying someone else's idea. Mm -hmm. By just doing that, you're bringing new things to the table. So, and whether you like it or not, in the end, if you're, even if you just like straight copy something, your way of internalizing how the original was is going to come out in what you do. So in that process of you taking something in, internalizing it, and then projecting it onto the page with your interpretation, it's already original. And everything, every other thing that you then do, whether you're maybe taking that face and applying it to a different character, changing the color scheme, having it be a new character with a different personality, it's a completely different thing now. So mm -hmm. like, the, yeah. You've yeah, already the achieved whole, a different thing, yeah. Exactly, exactly. You've got your original idea. You did it. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, so I think we covered everything in that second question. I think one thing I was like curious about is like the things that kind of got reinforced for you in that project. Hmm. hmm. Things that got reinforced. Um, I think something, uh, because, you know, we all kind of came together from working in Ethan Becker's class. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that Ethan Becker uh, uh, talked about was composition and mm -hmm. making your compositions interesting and how to how to do that in your workflow. That means like drawing outside of the border and then moving things around and scaling them differently. And then putting out an idea and then changing the camera angle, maybe maybe tilting it up a bit or or like skewing it a bit so that uh, you know you, you've got like this now diagonal composition. Those sort of ideas really came forth when we took your boards we had the idea, we had everything that we wanted to do here. And we were like, all right, how do we give this a little more depth? How do we make this more visually, uh, uh, more of a visual story? Um, mm -hmm. And that those ideas from Ethan Becker of like change, just changing around the composition, scaling things, moving things around and all that really came out in that process. And so that was really mm -hmm. reinforced to me that like, Hey, these boards that you're making, they are fluid. They are not solid things. They are fluid. Uh, people are going to change this. Yes. And, and you cannot be tied to that. And you get the, the, every change that they make is, is presenting that scene in a new way mm -hmm. um, that you maybe didn't recognize. And you just got to roll with that. And that was probably the biggest thing that got reinforced is that 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 changing scene, that changing storyboard, the idea that this one panel can be told in a thousand different ways. Um, and you just I keep remember that too, idea fluid. There was there was this thing that happened where uh, you drew a board and mm -hmm. I I misinterpreted the board when yeah. I drew it. But because the misinterpretation was kind of interesting. We just kind of kept it, which yeah. was like kind of great. I, I thought that was great. That's like no. such an interesting way for it to play out. I, I love that. I and I, I remember it's when he's it's when he looks at the girl, she looks back at him from the from from the soda machine. Um, and I had it something where he was kind of in his original lean over position, and it's really awkward because he's trying to look relaxed, but he also you know, just like the only I reason I found that awkward was because I did like, I think I sent it, I but I sent like reference like videos and images and I tried to do that pose and it was kind of hard to get it. So I kind of, I changed it just like a little bit where I was like, okay, maybe this yeah. is better. That kind and of that was kind of the point though, was that like, okay, this pose is really hard to do. So he's trying really hard to look relaxed and he's not <laughs> relaxed at all. <laughs> yeah. but, but because of that, when he was like looking over that way, kind of kind of relaxed on the counter, you interpreted that as his back was to her. And when you explained it that way, I was initially like, okay, but how we don't see how he gets to, gets to that pose. But I re when when I saw the boards together and I drew out that pose, it then made sense because he's looking at her, she's pouring a soda and looks back at him. 
it would make sense that, that when the camera returns, he had hurriedly like turned around to like scrub something, pretending he wasn't looking. So it worked mm. out great. I think it, I think it, it, it added a, a, a really nice comedic moment to it. So, yeah, like the, I see that so much in uh, movies where you're, there's like a scene, the characters are trying to hide from the bad guys. The bad guy walks in and then the, it shows the shot like the characters were initially there and then they're gone. And it's like, oh, yep. like it continuity wise, it is like, oh, well, like what? Like that doesn't make sense. But when you think of it, storytelling wise, it makes a lot of sense. They, ha- yeah. they hid from the characters. It's supposed to be jarring. It's supposed to be like, oh, like where did they go? That's yeah. kind of the effect. And for yeah, me, it was definitely. like, oh, like he for me, I was like, he sprung into that pose quickly. So I was mm-hmm. like, he he got there like that. That was my interpretation. So I was like, yeah, that's why I was. I, it, now that you mentioned that sort of crime thing, it's it's like when it's like when the uh, when when the character that's being chased, like when it when it then like pans out or whatever to like show the scene as the bad guys are coming in, and that character's like trying to blend into the scene, like yeah, to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's that's <laughs> it's, it's kind of how it turned out, and 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 yeah, I like that. I like that that just different interpretation turned into that. That's really mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, composition, very important. Mm-hmm. I guess uh, my final question would be like, you know, what are your plans for the future? And this is the spotlight moment. So if you'd like to share anything, like plug your social media, or if you want to say anything to the audience, like this is your time. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just working on storyboards. I'm just, I'm just, you know, developing my own drawings, um, working on storyboards, working a lot of fan stuff. Um mm to just get better and, and to just keep improving um, to the point that I can eventually uh, develop a professional portfolio and submit that to um, a studio like Cartoon Network or, or eventually like working for Titmouse would be like a dream. Um, mm. So right now I'm just, I'm just plugging away. Um, I am, I'm at Dia art that's j-a-y-d-e-a art i'll put the link in uh the description but that's your instagram yeah. right that's my instagram it's my twitter more active on instagram um mm. and uh yeah i'm i'm currently working on a little on a little i'm i'm, I'm huge i'm really into critical role and uh i'm working on a little they, they're like little fan animatics where people take snippets from the show and then turn them into a little animatic kind of like what we did is that anyone can participate in that? Oh yeah, no, anyone can make fan and like fan animatics for critical role. Oh, yeah. but is is like is it like a common practice to make fan animatics for critical role? There's a if if you look up like uh critical role like animatic or something on YouTube, there's tons of them. I've watched oh. so many of them and they're like they're so fun. Like the original content's hilarious, but like when they portray it in, in animation like, in a storyboard in animation or something it's like it's 10 times funnier like it's 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 amazing and so i thought that was a really unique exercise of taking that audio and then mm. turning it into an animatic or a storyboard um so i'm working on that i've got that right over here and uh yeah i'll, I'll have that out i definitely have to um, hop on that that's great <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't recommend it more it's it's so it's so fun and it's so funny like it's absolutely hilarious awesome all right well it was great to talk to you you can check out uh Jacques in the links down in the description and overall good job thank yeah, you so much for it. working with me yeah it was my pleasure thank you so much for having me all right bye